There were two sources of the original idea for me. I'd heard about the Duke Campus Farm from students, and I'm like, what is this? It's like, we gotta go volunteer on the farm, you know? They have two volunteer days a week, and they absolutely loved it. Like, it gets them outside, they're getting their hands in the, in the dirt and the mud, and they're having a good time with it. And I started thinking, you know, this is a really amazing idea. We could do something like that at the Marine Lab. So what would an equivalent of the Duke Campus Farm look like at the Duke Marine Lab? And, uh, and the answer was shellfish aquaculture. Talked to somebody who actually knows how to do shellfish aquaculture, my collaborator James Morris, and yeah, we went and scoped out the site. And he says, Yeah, this looks like a pretty good site. And since then, it's just been rolling. We started in 2018, so to consider me an expert is kind of a joke, right? And so <laughs> I'm trained as a geneticist and a molecular biologist, not an oyster aquaculture person, right? And so it's like the way to learn, you jump in feet first, and that's literally what we're doing. The Duke Aqua Farm is located in Atlantic Beach, right next to Fort Macon. And so it's about a 25 minute boat ride from here. You know, we kind of have to navigate between the islands and through the port, and, but it's a nice boat ride on a good day. The motivation was really a student experience. At the Marine Lab, we definitely embrace experiential learning as much as possible. We get students out in the field as much as we can and try to utilize the natural resources that we have around here in our teaching. But if you're not in a class that actually does those experiences, then what opportunities do you have? This was creating an opportunity that wasn't necessarily tied to a course. And it gave us the ability to take students out of the environment and actually, you know, have a purpose. We're raising food. Each of those students are at different places in their academic careers, right? And so they can learn from each other. We go over there, we kind of anchor up the boat, and then we jump in the water. The farm is actually uh, 0 0.6 acres. So, you know, my, my colleague, collaborator, James Morris, calls it a, a, a oyster garden <laughs> more than a farm, which is fair enough. So it's a small 0 0.6 acres, and it's marked by four corner poles. And there is a one-inch poly line that is anchored into the sediment. And so those are what's holding the farm down. And so we have two lines that run parallel to the land that are anchoring it down. And then we tie additional lines in between those two lines. And we have floating bags that are tied to the lines that run between the two. Each of those lines has 50 bags on them, and the bags have between 150 and 200 oysters each. We purchase baby oysters from a hatchery, a local hatchery here, and we buy them as what they call spat, which are baby oysters that are about one centimeter big. This year we bought 50,000 spat, and we put it in 10 bags. So we have 10 bags with about 5,000 each. As those oysters start to grow, they start to overcrowd and limited resource. And so we take the bigger ones out and we use those to populate the grow out bags, the ones that have the 150 to 200 per bag. <laughs> the oyster farm, we're interested in microplastics and microplastics in the environment. And so what happens to microplastics as they come across the farm? What do the oysters do with it? Are they filtering it out, right? And so can we actually measure the microplastics in the water in and around the farm to see what impact the farm is having on those microplastics? And then if the oysters are filtering the microplastics out of the water, what do the oysters do with it? And so what's the fate of that plastic after the oysters filtered out of the water column? And so we're trying to develop the techniques and the protocols for following the plastics across the farm through the oysters. A lot of the gear that we're using is made of plastic. So are we actually generating more plastic, right? You know, and microplastics in the water, which is an interesting hypothesis and I think something we, we should know about. That's a really important environmental question. So the, season, the seasonality and the year-to-year -year variation and when to harvest, I'm still figuring all that out. It's a learning curve. We were throwing them out, doing it out there, but then I realized we're stepping on all the old shells. So it's like, yeah, I don't want to do this. And we thought about bringing them back to the marine lab, but it's like, just add to the reef here. It is very cold, though. Oh, like, oh, no! <laughs> over time, what we realized is, is that that oyster farm is essentially an ecosystem, right? We're setting up an ecosystem and there's an opportunity to study that ecosystem. Then there's all kinds of research questions that we can use that resource to address. And so that's actually been really exciting as well. I think there's, there's a lot of possibilities there.